I'm Jason Butler Harner, and I play Henry. Hi, my name is Asia Naomi King, and I play Lydia. Hey, I'm William Jackson Harper. I play Yao slash Jason. I'm Madeline Brewer. I'm, I'm playing the role of Colleen. Hey, what's up? I'm Whitney White. I'm the director of the new Audible original, Animals, by Stacey Osei-Kaford. to me very much is about this couple, Lydia, a black woman, and Henry, a white man, and what happens when years of issues come to a head after a kind of spontaneous marriage proposal, when friends of theirs come over for dinner. Stacy, the playwright, has kind of put within the container of this play so many modern issues that people face, particularly people in interracial relationships, and so it's kind of a bullet of a play. You guys, what would you say? I love that you just called it a bullet because it takes off and it keeps going and it does not stop. It's continuous action and revelation and artistry. Stacy keeps up so well with the way that in different situations, we as human beings, we adapt and we change and we modify and we code switch and, we, and, and she includes all of that. And it's so often that you'll get a project, it'll come across your lap, and then you don't start working on the project until months, years later sometimes, and sometimes projects become irrelevant or not as poignant or not as on, but there's a lot that makes the piece very vibrant now in a way, even more than when I first read it. So why is it an important story to tell right now? When looking at interracial relationships specifically, there are times when a certain comfort is created around certain words or language so there's that closeness there that you can either use against the person or use to be closer to the person in terms of navigating the conversations around race, which is really great. And I think what a lot of people have been forced to do during this time. I think I had just read um, How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. And I was just like really trying to look at myself very clearly and look at Colleen very clearly and not let her get away with a lot of the things I think we as people try to get away with. She has her own um, prejudices built in and, and just not letting her get away with that and really trying to put them on, put them on display. For me, I've had experiences where I've let certain things slide and there's something in this play that speaks to that some of these things are met head on in a way that I probably haven't met head on uh, just because it's like, I don't want to have this fight. You know, it's like this, this ruins my day to have this discussion, even though I'm right. And I know I'm right, but I don't want to ruin my day. I want to just like, let it go. You know, in this year, we're seeing a lot of people that are like, I'm not letting this go. This is like, now it's actually really costing me to hold on to the pain and the anger and the frustration and it's bursting out. Um, I just felt that so hard. I literally was writing out what you said. What was it like to perform for audio where there was no live audience? And what did it feel like? The ingenuity of Audible and Williamstown to try to figure out a way to make art and lemonade from some lemons in a situation are so fascinating to me. I actually recorded it in a, a small, narrow walk-in closet, but I use the shelves for all the props. There's a meal that happens in the play and drinks definitely happen in the play. There was just a sea of different kind of snacks because I wanted a crunch in this section or something maybe juicy for this section. Sometimes I'm that person that like doesn't like an audience to make sounds because I'm like, you're going to miss it. Be quiet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh great, you're gonna hear everything. everything. <laughs> yeah. Each moment was precious because the internet might take it away <laughs> because we don't have the luxury of just being in a room and just looking each other in the eye and trusting that we'll be able to hear and see and really take each other in. It meant that every single time that you get, did get that and the internet didn't conspire against you, you held on to it with your whole chest. And so you're just like sort of always on the razor's edge a little bit, which is, uh, you know, frustrating and pretty cool at the same time. Rapid fire questions. Favorite dish and beverage to bring to a dinner party? Go. Alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> I think that counts as both, right? Yeah. <laughs> beverage. 
I'm a big ice cream bringer. Alcohol for me. Dress up for a dinner party or dress down? Dress up. Dress up. Wow, dress down, comfortable. 100% dress down. Who would you rather go to a dinner party with? I feel like Jason knows wine well. I think you would all be fun. I would love to have a dinner party with all of you. Well, yes. <laughs> Well, dang, Asia, now that you said it, can't nobody else use that answer. <laughs> <laughs>